Hey, this is Brandon from Poindexter, and today I want to take a few minutes to cover the very exciting topic of reading an income statement. And we've created a five-step process that anyone can use as a starting point for understanding what the information in the income statement is telling us and how we can generate some actionable insights based on the data. This video is intended for people that are just starting out with income statement analysis and don't have a background in accounting or finance, but want to use the income statement to make some better decisions for their organizations. I'll provide a link to the document we'll be covering in this video below if you'd like to use it as a guide while uh, doing this process on your own. So starting off with step number one, we have converting the income statement into percentages, uh, including common size and period growth formats. We'll cover what that means in a few minutes, but what that will help us do is more easily execute step number two, which is looking for important trends and relationships in the company's performance. And then we'll go ahead and answer some questions about those line items to drill down and start generating some insights about what's taking place behind those numbers, which will help us propose some solutions geared towards maximizing some of our successes and minimizing some of our mistakes. And in the final step, we'll set some specific goals that reinforce the solutions we've proposed. So before we begin with the process, it'll help to cover the structure of the income statement so we can familiarize ourselves with the information uh, and how it's laid out. And to help us along the way, we've downloaded the results for Tesla uh, to use as an example throughout this video. The reason I chose Tesla is because I'm a bit of a Tesla fan, despite the fact that I've never driven one and that I currently cannot afford one. Nonetheless, it's helpful to note that you can download the financial statements for any publicly traded company on their websites, which is usually located on what's called the Investor Relations page. Okay, so income statements typically follow a standardized format, dictating that the revenues sit at the top, which is the section that represents all the money we're making from selling our goods or services to customers. Just below that, we have the cost of revenue section, which contains all of the costs directly associated with producing our goods or services uh, for customers. So in Tesla's case, they primarily sell automobiles, and as a result, all of the costs associated with producing those automobiles, including things like materials and labor, will go in this section. You may also see this section labeled cost of services, cost of sales, cost of goods sold, and possibly some other cost ofs, but just keep in mind that they all indicate the same idea. And below cost of revenue is our gross income, which tells us how profitably we are producing our revenue, and it lets us know how much money we have left over to cover the remaining costs of the business. The operating expense section is where we categorize all of the other things that we're spending money on uh, to run the rest of the company. These are things like janitorial services, office supplies, ridiculous launch parties, and if we're so lucky, this is where we'd classify gas for the corporate jet, for instance. If the company is wasting money, this is usually a good place to start looking for any areas to save uh, because these are expenses that are not directly tied to producing any revenue. Directly below operating expenses, we have operating income, which is the profit or loss we've incurred as a result of the company's overall operations. If there's a loss at this point, then an investigation is certainly warranted into what is causing this loss. An important thing to figure out would be whether this is due to a one-time expense or whether this is something more systemic in the organization. In Tesla's case, this seems to be a recurring theme, meaning it isn't a one-time event, so we would need to take a deeper look into the income statement to figure out what's going on. Moving on, one of our last stops is the other income and expense section. This is where we detail all of the money that we're making or spending on things that are not directly related to the company's core business. For instance, if Tesla sold a building that it owned for a profit, uh, then that profit would be recorded here since it has nothing to do with producing or selling automobiles. And now we arrive at our final destination, which is net income. In a very basic sense, this is the money we've actually made or lost over the period. In the case of a profit, we can then distribute that money back to shareholders or reinvest it back into the company to fuel further growth. Uh, for Tesla, since they have a loss, they would need to somehow cover that shortfall, either with the money that they have in the bank or through a loan or by raising money from more investors. Keep in mind that net income is a semi-simplistic way of looking at how much cash we've actually made or lost over the period, and we'll be doing another video later on uh, on the cash flow statement to demonstrate why Tesla may actually need more or less money uh, to cover the entirety of this loss. But now that we've learned the structure of the income statement, we can take a look at converting it over into a common size format, which is part of step one of our process. As a side note, this analysis is better to do while comparing multiple periods, whether you're looking at forecasts or actual results, uh, because in this way you'll get a better idea of how the company is doing over time and where it is heading. Nevertheless, what a common size income statement indicates is we'll be taking the currency values within each line item and converting them into a percentage value relative to one of the line items of our choosing. So it's standard practice to use total revenue as the basis for converting all the values into percentages because total revenue tends to be a very important line item in the sense that if we're not generating any revenue, then we don't have much of a business and we certainly can't cover any of our costs. 
Uh, it also provides the context around how we're spending and making money relative to that total revenue number. One of the reasons we call this a common sense format is because we can also convert the income statement of one of Tesla's competitors, like Ford for instance, and do an apples to apples comparison of the two companies in a standardized format. But before we start with the analysis, uh, we'll need to convert the income statement to show period over period growth so we can also see how each line item is growing or shrinking over time. Uh, this way, we'll get a fuller picture of any interconnectedness between cost and revenue and can get a better sense of what's happening as the company grows. So now that we have our income statement formatted, we can start step number two by identifying the important line items and their trends and relationships. To begin with, I'd like to start by looking at the margins for gross income and operating income. Doing this, we can see that Tesla is spending almost 80% of their total revenue on the costs associated with producing that revenue, which seems quite high because it doesn't look like it leaves much room uh, to cover the remaining costs of running the rest of the business. However, if we look at Ford, uh, we would see that they spend nearly 83% of total revenue on those costs of producing their vehicles, uh, which actually appears to give Tesla a slight advantage. However, an issue seems to arise when looking at the operating expenses, where Tesla is spending almost 41% of revenue and Ford is only spending about 10%. So this raises a red flag and is worth investigating why Tesla is spending so much on this category. Uh, for instance, R&D looks quite high as a percentage of revenue, so this may be an important line item for Tesla and would certainly require some justification to maintain at this level of expenditure. If you're just starting your business or you don't have a comparison to look at for your own company, uh, we've developed a few rules to help you identify the line items that you may want to be using in your analysis in step three. The first is that revenue should always be applied to step number three because revenue is always important. Uh, as we stated before, revenue is a good read on the activity in the business and we cannot cover any of our costs without it. The second consideration are costs that consist of a high percentage of total revenue because we'll want to justify why these costs are burning up so much cash. And the third thing we'll want to look for are costs that are growing at a similar or faster rate than revenue because they could potentially limit how quickly the company can grow. To illustrate our third rule, since it's the least straightforward, when we look at some of the trends for Tesla, we can see that in 2014, as automotive revenue grew, so did their costs for producing automobiles. But those costs actually grew at a slower rate, which is good because it means that their profit margins for vehicles actually grew which is what we may expect to see as the company grows due to things like getting bigger discounts on bulk purchases for materials and more efficient utilization of resources. However, in 2015, the company also posted healthy growth, albeit much slower, but the cost of producing automobiles actually grew at a faster rate than the revenue, which indicates a lack of scalability in the business model and could potentially limit growth. As a result, it'll be important to answer some questions about this line item because it satisfies both our second and third rule, and we'll want to develop a plan of action to address some of the issues that we're seeing as the company moves forward. Keep in mind that we're looking at Tesla's consolidated income statement, which means it's a high-level overview, and there are likely tens to possibly even hundreds of line items under each of these categories. So if you're doing this analysis for your own company, it would be best to view a more detailed uh, breakdown of the income statement because we'll want to be as specific as possible when developing our answers to the questions in the next step. Okay, so now that we've laid out how to identify important information our income statement is telling us, it's now time to move on to step number three, which is where we'll answer questions about the line items we've identified to get a sense of what's taking place behind the numbers, which will help us develop actionable responses to the information we're seeing. So if looking at this page freaks you out right now, feel free to just delete the example answers provided since you'll have a good idea of what to do in a second, and I basically just pulled these examples out of, let's just say, a cold and dark place. We'll start by answering the core questions provided in column B. Uh, these questions are not exhaustive or a one-size-fits-all approach, and you may benefit from coming up with more specific questions to address your own situation, but nonetheless, this should be a good starting point to develop some key insights. The method here is what we're calling an enhanced SWOT analysis, with the first three questions addressing the execution or performance of the line item, and the last four questions representing the more traditional SWOT approach. For those that don't know, SWOT is a strategic framework that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And all we've done is add an E for execution for, to the beginning. If you end up forgetting what those letters mean, you can just hover over each of them and a description will pop up. After answering the enhanced SWOT questions, we'll ask ourselves why at least three times for each successive answer. 
This approach is derived from a framework created by Sakichi Toyota in the early 1900s uh, called the five whys, and it's a method for getting to the root of a question or problem in consideration. The goal for using both of these approaches together is to drill down to the core factors driving the performance in the line item, which is made easier by providing the most detailed answers possible. In this step, there really is no substitute for having in-depth knowledge about what's going on in the company. So if you don't have an answer for one of the questions, you may want to find somebody in the organization that does, or at least figure out a different way to find the answer. Once we've answered the three whys, we can then move on to step number four, which is developing a response or solution that reinforces or corrects the answer that we provided in column H. And then finally, once we've determined our response or solution, we can then set measurable benchmarks to track our effectiveness, completing step five. For further illustration, we'll take a look at Tesla's automotive revenue and go through the first question, which asks what direction the line item is trending. If we take a look back at the income statement, we can see that it's grown by over 40% on average for the past two years, but slowed significantly in the most recent year. When asking ourselves why this is the case, we'll need to know what's happening in the company, and then we can start to state something like, in 2014, the company aggressively expanded overseas, and a slower growth rate may be because they didn't expand into any new markets in 2015. If we ask ourselves why again, we might say that expanding into new markets requires the company to spend more money on things like manufacturing, distribution, and marketing, so the company might not have been in a position to take on these higher costs. And finally, if we ask ourselves why one final time, we can take a look back at the income statement and say that it appears the company is spending too much money on some operating expenses that are using up cash that could otherwise be used for growth. An interesting point here is that marketing and distribution are actually often classified as operating expenses. So if we drilled down further into the income statement and found that one of these items, which are both needed for growth, is the reason that operating expenses are so high, then it could indicate that the uh, something in the business model is broken, which highlights the significance of our third rule for identifying important line items. But since this is a fabricated explanation, we're going to assume Tesla's business model isn't broken, and in our solution to the answer for the third why, we'll identify research and development and administrative expenses as being too high, and look for opportunities to cut waste or at least put a freeze on growing either budget. And for step five, the way we'll measure our success in this response is by bringing research and development back below 15% of total revenue and decreasing sales general and administrative expenses to less than 20% of total revenue by the end of 2016, which, if we assume that revenue is still growing, it should only make our task that much easier. However, once we finish step number five, it doesn't necessarily mean our work is done. What's important here is that we take stock and understand how our individual answers for steps four and five affect the solutions we develop as answers to the other questions, as well as understanding the downstream implications that they have regarding our future financial performance. For instance, even though we've identified the need to curtail research and development expenses in our response, if we look at the example response provided to the question about the threats posed to automotive revenue, it states that some R&D initiatives are critical to addressing those threats. So presumably this would limit the degree to which we can cut the expense if we think these threats are substantial, and we would then need to look to other R&D initiatives to cut. This is where the process gets a little fuzzier, as there are multiple and sometimes mutually exclusive decisions to consider, so arriving at the optimum balance usually requires more sophisticated financial modeling, which is something we'll cover in another video. If you'd like to try and take a crack at doing the financial modeling on your own, uh, I recommend checking out Poindexter, which is our product. It is the fastest and easiest way to do it. Uh, you can find it at getpointexter.com. It's free to sign up, so you have nothing to lose. But for now, I hope this video was helpful to you and provided a better understanding of how to approach using the income statement as a decision-making tool. Until next time, we wish you the best of luck growing your business.